I moved closer to the mountain's edge. Then I stooped and twisted simultaneously to grab hold of the ground beneath me. I began easing myself down the cliffside. Now that I had moved closer to the fallen hat, I noticed that it was stuck on a thorn of a prickly pear cactus. Great. This eliminated the concern of accidentally knocking it further down the mountain's edge. Unabated, I was able to creep the rest of the way and retrieve my Stetson. Placing it on my head made me feel authentic again. Hugging the mountain wall, it was time to make the pirouette. Feeling a bit cocky, as if like I was Indiana Jones, I easily pirouetted to face the horizon. Then, while sidestepping along the rock, rocky brim towards the path, Murphy, Murphy quickly reminded me of his presence when my foot slipped off the cliffside. I was barely able to steady myself by grabbing the roots hanging out from the cliff edge in a hope and prayer that they would hold my weight. They did allowing me to leap safely through the thorny bushes and land nearby where I had thrown the trekking pole and backpack. My cockiness almost gave way to Murphy's Law, or it might just have been pride before the fall. Either way, it was another mistake, and yet it was another blessing. The joy of success quickly turned into dismay as the exertion drained the energy from my body and I collapsed onto one knee. I feared that if I lay completely down, I would never get back on my feet. Fighting through the dizziness and pounding heart was just less of the impossible. Once again, the animal instinct inside me took over. I would need this survival instinct to make it back safely. I would also have to call upon all my skills as an experienced hiker. For example, following footprints on the path, locating obscure cairns, and utilizing my internal directional compass. It was time to get my body moving once again, leaning on the trekking pole for support while holding my backpack, I wheeled myself to stand on both feet. Then I took a step, and then I took another. Success. I needed to take more, needed to take a moment and slow my breathing before taking that third step. In, out, in, out, in, out. Dragging my backpack along, I moved on a snail's pace. Thanking God, goodness, God had gifted me. The... Dragging my backpack along, I moved at a snail's pace. Thank goodness God had gifted me with additional time today, both figuratively and literally. The process of step step and rest as my method of descent seemed to be working. I slowly began mitigating my way down the mountain. During times of survival, I find it fascinating that the mind will wander. I suspect it is a self-preservation mechanism the brain uses to prevent itself from being overcome by the fear of death. The problem is when you lose focus, mistakes are made that can ultimately lead to your demise. And my mind began to wander again. I heard the chatter of the mountaineers as they inched their way up a distant cliff. The sounds of people talking somewhere in my head released Marvin Gaye. 
Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know we've got to find a way. Then I mentally floated into the realm of virtues that over time created my soul. The seven virtues that I hold dear in this world are love, pain, sadness, happiness, adventure, beauty, peace. Each of them represented a significant portion of my experiences in life. God and I had time today for a fruitful discussion of these topics. God and I hadn't had time today for a fruitful discussion of these topics. But they are why, in the end, my continuation of life has always prevailed over the choice of death. From as far back as I can remember, the music that played in my head was the glue that allowed me to identify the seven attributes that were connected to my soul. I could sit for hours listening to songs whose words and feelings touched my heart and shaped my desires. The lyrics I listened to influenced my entire being. In the depth of each song, I would live in my dreams. Then subconsciously or consciously, those dreams would become my actuality that I would choose to emulate. That is why I am known for saying, I'm living the dream. As if on cue, lyrics began to play in my mind. Master told me one day I'd find peace in every way, but in search for the clue, wrong things I was bound to do. Keep my head up to the sky for the clouds to tell me why. Singing was earth, wind, and fire. He gave me the will to be free, purpose to live this reality. So we're saying for you to hear, keep your head in faith's atmosphere. With a stubbornly tenacious face, I looked knowingly towards the sky. God's message to me was absolute. He was going to lead me out of this wilderness and home to the woman I revered. All I had to do was carry out my part of the covenant by keeping 